Throughout gaming and entertainment history, there are only a few prime examples of immense work and love coming to fruition, only to make just enough in returns to avoid pissing shareholders off. It is in that chair that real awkwardness is sitting. On one hand, fans who enjoyed the original are split into two groups, those that would absolutely love a sequel and those that are content with the experience they had during the first one. The creators made a good enough thing to avoid getting their doors locked by the higher-ups, yet aren't giving permission to try again. That is where Ben Studio's Days Gone intellectual property currently stands. Part of the problem is that Ben answers to PlayStation, or Sony to be more specific. As an exclusive developer for the powerhouse, the only pitch to stakeholders is the money. If you look across the road at Ubisoft, where none of their first-party new IPs flew off the shelves, or even garnered much critical success, they only have to answer to themselves, so they get to stand in front of the mirror and give themselves permission to go ahead on a second attempt. This week marked yet another PlayStation exclusive landing on PCs through the Steam Store, and in previous years, Access to these exclusive titles has done a lot of work to drum up new fans and some hype surrounding franchises like Horizon, Death Stranding, and others. Unfortunately for Days Gone, Ben Studio from Oregon has reportedly already been told no when it comes to moving forward with a sequel to their 2019 zombie open world action game. During the cycle of news that informed gamers an original Last of Us remaster is possibly coming to PS5s in the near future, Bloomberg's Jason Schreier reported that the pitch for Days Gone 2 was rejected by Sony. Although the first game had been profitable, Schreier writes, its development had been lengthy and critical reception was mixed, so a Days Gone 2 wasn't seen as a viable option. According to Bloomberg, part of the Ben Studio team was assigned to assist first-party powerhouse Naughty Dog, who are behind games like The Last of Us and Uncharted. They were assisting on a multiplayer game that has yet to be announced. Another portion of the team in Oregon was assigned to work on a new Uncharted game, with supervision from Naughty Dog. After being assigned to play second fiddle to Sony's favorite adopted child, many studio leads left the Days Gone developer. Following that, the remaining leadership requested to be moved from an, the unannounced Uncharted game, and Sony complied. Schreier writes, They got their wish last month and are now working on a game of their own that will be part of a brand new franchise. In part, it has got to feel pretty good for Ben Studios to release their beloved Days Gone to an entirely new audience on PC, especially knowing that they may never get a chance to make a second one. It becomes bittersweet when you think about the fans. Those coming on board now, or diehards from the get-go, who will both clamor for and possibly never see Days Gone 2. For now, let us just celebrate the achievements of Ben Studios and take one final ride with Deacon St. John and his trusty motorcycle. I am Wyatt Fawcett, and this is The First Bite. On paper, everything about Days Gone was created to appeal to me specifically. I am a fan of open world games, a fan of post-apocalyptic settings, role-playing game elements both big and small, and motorcycles. I was flush with excitement when Sony revealed Ben Studios' original franchise. Leading up to the launch of the game, I had found some small adoration for biker family FX show Sons of Anarchy so I was hoping that Days Gone would provide much more in terms of appeasing motorcycle enthusiasts. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Much like the show created by Kurt Sutter, motorcycles and the club that they are involved in are more like a reason for things happening rather than a purpose. It turns out to be window dressing. Given the hands-on nature of Days Gone and its open-world traversal in your saddle, there's a fairly fun system to upgrade your ride. Though, as a rider myself, the feeling of piloting this metal steed is infuriatingly floaty and feels generally terrible. It's very arcadey. 
This immediate negative is nearly overcome by the lush and intricate environments in which Days Gone takes place. Riding around in this open world, no matter how terrible it may feel, players are rarely minutes away from yet another sight or piece of scenery worth getting off your bike to look around in. Story-wise, Ben Studio doesn't play with convention much, giving players a reason to fight for survival without much upfront in terms of major investments. Though, over hours of gameplay and awe, the slow burn story begins to form, and by the time you roll credits on Days Gone or get relatively close, it makes for one truly magnificent piece of storytelling. The only problem with that is, you can easily put hundreds of hours into checking out each and every tiny detail on this large map, so when lead voice actor Sam Witwer says Days Gone was always meant to be a slow burn and story, for better or worse, it was designed for you to take your time. You can empathize with his criticisms of journalists who don't appreciate the game's narrative. Unfortunately for Bend, this only created negative views of the game, as it breeds a feeling of whininess. It is also very difficult to tell if a journalist has actually played the entire game or not, so the argument becomes harder. In my case, I have yet to roll credits on Days Gone. As it is a joyful and exhilarating stealth zombie game I return to in times of need and when I desire for some time killing. In the end, I have little defense against the arguments that Days Gone just needs time to get better, because there's an inherent duty to the storyteller to do better up front. Where Days Gone utterly shines is in its technology. We have all played zombie games before, and they are either robust bullet sponges or terror-inducing nightmares, but no game has ever made AI zombie tech like Days Gone has. Acting like water, almost, hordes of zombies can be found streaming through the map. They climb and fall over obstacles like rushing rivers, making traversal impossible, and react with horde mentality better than almost any antagonist script in gaming. The hordes in Days Gone are one of the most efficiently horrifying enemies I have ever run up against. Humans, on the other hand, are a bit more of stealth game standard. Walking in paths, sometimes altered by events, and easily picked apart with careful use of the mechanics at the disposal of the main character. This includes sneaking, hiding in tall grass or bushes, silenced weapons and quiet takedowns, and more. But the best part about those two in combination is that a smart player can use the rabidness of the undead to distract or dismantle human enemies. It all makes for a greatly exhilarating gameplay loop, especially in situations where you're infiltrating a base, make a mistake or a loud noise, and are then forced to complete the mission and get out of dodge with a horde of zombies rushing to your location. When it comes time to boil down the experience of Ben Studio's first true original property, because they helped make Bubsy 3D in 96, and they also helped make almost the entire Siphon Filter franchise dating back to 1999, back when they were known as Eidetic. There's an easy to decipher, unforgettable and forgettable list. The unremarkable aspects of Days Gone can be simplified into two major parts. The slow to heat up narrative, which includes a lot of forgettable characters, and it's extremely disappointing motorcycle mechanics. But this is coming from me, a fan of story and a lover of motorcycles, so those aspects of this experience found themselves under more than desirable scrutiny. Unforgettable aspects of this journey include the tech and terror of the zombies' artificial intelligence, and the absolutely sensational overworld and universe design. Even though I'm taking my time, jumping back into Days Gone always brings a certain level of awe with my surroundings. Something that few games, if any, truly do these days. Especially in the open world action genre. So, as we celebrate the release of Ben Studio's Identity Project on PCs across the world, let us applaud them for all the things that they put together that no one else has before, or even been able to replicate since. I still vehemently believe that the riding and motorcycle mechanics should have been more simulation based, which I was hoping would be tweaked for a sequel, but alas, I will have to enjoy the real life analog instead. Cheers to Ben Studio.
and I'm thrilled to see more people get the chance to play Days Gone. It will be an exciting day when we finally get to see what they're making next. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. I just wanted to take the time to say thank you again. I know I do this at the end of every episode, but, but there's something truly special about this game, and it's one of the better open-world experiences I've had in a really long time. So if you have a PC and you haven't played Days Gone yet, I would suggest picking it up. I think it's a great exploration. It's, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of unique situations to be in. And the enemies, uh, at least the undead enemies, are truly terrifying. Like every week, I just want to say thank you to all the people that stop by and say hello on social media who are listening and subscribing slash following to our podcast on all of the big channels. It really means a lot to me to be able to have fun and write these scripts and talk about these gaming experiences that I really love. And, and I hope to see you guys back. I want to keep making these and want to keep growing to a bigger audience and maybe even have a uh, slightly increased production in due time we're working on a couple ideations on second shows or third shows or fourth shows even that will coincide with the release of the first bite until then i hope you come back next friday and i hope you like it enough to share with your friends and family and i will Continue having a good time and putting this show together. If you want to reach out on social media, the best place to find me is at Wyatt Fawcett on Twitter. You can come by and, and say hello, and we can have a little chat about video games. Until then, I will see you this time next week. Cheers. <laughs>